I mean, it's a recurring issue at our committee that when we look at any project, we, we very often find, Roy, that if the project goes wrong at the beginning, it's unlikely to work at the end, and if there's a lack of sufficiency of rigour being applied at the outset, and in particular in the absence of applying quality standards to milestones, would seem to members of this committee as to be a major issue. Uh, and one of the examples that the Auditor General listed in his report, in paragraph 138, it told us that some, some, of 14, some of the 1,400 cables installed in the first boat were too short. And it's just amazing to members of the committee and perhaps to the public as to how that wasn't discovered. And in fact, it wasn't reported to the Parliament until the turnaround director was involved, and that was 2022. How, how on earth can something like that happen, that cables that are too short can go unseen and unnoticed for nearly four years and cause that significant delay to occur. Now, I would connect that directly with the application of quality standards and inspection and so on and so forth. Why was that missing in this, this case, do we think? So, again, it's commenting more generally on, on states of different types of contract, but, but this BIMCO new build contract is a design and build contract. So, once the tender are... Uh, takes the concept design or the, the outline design, he then and signs a contract, he then he then owns that design. So his responsibility is to produce the outcomes that are set in the front page of the contract and it's entirely up to him how he does that and how he goes about that. And the payments and the final payment is based on what that end product is. There isn't an allowance for the for CMAL, if I'm correct in saying this, to actually judge how he goes about that as he as he as he delivers the final product because it's a complete design and build uh, system what what you may argue is that there, there there would have been an opportunity there and there was for CMAL to be in about the yard they have i think within the contract allows them a an individual to be in and about the yard to witness this now they can witness it and they probably they were recording issues that were going on with the build but there is a mechanism as far as i can see in the contract to halt that. So suspension determination is set out, can't remember quite what the clause is, but it's very clear about those terms of when a contractor, when the buyer is able to trigger a, a stop of the contract and a repayment of the fees. One is a default or refund guarantee. Second is lack of work for more than 14 days. Uh, and I've forgotten the, the third one, but it doesn't specifically talk about quality or specification. As a, as a trigger mechanism for halting the contract. Well, I suppose the last question on that is, shouldn't it? I mean, it surely must be a ridiculous position to not be able to challenge the fact that cables are too short on a boat and for that to remain in position for four years until somebody else comes on the scene, the turnaround director, to identify that. Is that surely that must be something that we're, we're looking at. I'm aware that the observation reports were a mechanism, Roy, to raise and highlight issues. Those are essentially change requests in the quality world, uh, and they may or may not have been carried out by the, the builder, but surely to goodness that area, the whole area needs to be strengthened. So the ORRs, you're happen. absolutely right, the ORRs are the mechanism by which the buyer is able to identify those issues that they are unhappy with and they need to be rectified before the boats would be taken be, be taken into ownership. So that that was fully documented. CML were... Uh, religious with identifying what those ORRs are and uh, and, ask, and, and asking that the, the builder corrected those before the boats would have been handed over. So none of those issues would have materialised in the final boats if it had gotten as far as that, but those were, that's the mechanism. Whether the BIMCO contract needs to change to deal with this more explicitly, again, that's maybe a question that is for our shipbuilding experts of CML that you speak to Kevin and, and others around. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it accepted, this this whole point that the Auditor General made, is that accepted by all parties that these cables were too short, or is there some dispute about that? I would uh, maybe defer to Mo on what the Yard's current position is in relation to those cables, but I think certainly CMAL had understood and had identified that the cables were too short, so I think that's I think it's accepted. Um, but again, others will... Even by the builder? They accepted that the cables were too short. So I, I forgive me. I don't know whether whether the, it's accepted by former management F Mail when it's understood the cables were put in, but it's certainly, to my understanding, accepted by the current uh, management team at the yard. 
Really can, we can we bring uh, Mo Rooney in at this point, please? Mo. Um, yes, thank you. Um, so we, we don't know what happened with the cables in the first instance. They were installed prior to Ferguson's coming into public ownership. Um, the, as we understand it, it is standard practice that when these cables are fitted, um, they are left with a bit of excess. Um, they were fitted by reputable contractors, so it was assumed that these coils that were rolled up um, that, that they included the, the length of cable that was required. So this issue wasn't discovered until um, an inspection in January, or so I understand sort of tail end of December, um, when these were un, unrolled and, and measured. And it was at that point that that issue was discovered. So we don't know how that's come about. But as I say, the, they were installed by reputable contractors and there were assumptions made on that basis.